wow, we would have never believed this. You can listen to us on our podcast. We're on Spotify. We're on Apple. We're on Google. Go out there and listen to us when you're driving to work or maybe uh, when you're just sitting at home or you're on the treadmill at the gym. So we're excited about it. We're glad you're excited about it too. Hey everyone, welcome to Lunch Break. I'm here with uh, my good friend Tom and my newer friend Justin, uh, Justin Mena. And um, we're, we're going to just talk about Justin's life. and I love it. Going on. I, I've already felt a connection with Justin. Yeah. That's why I love doing Justin's the show. A good dude. It is. It is. I, 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 you know, the spirit uh, just kind of connects. And, and we, well, we have a really close mutual friend that Tom and I both know very well, Chris Baden. Yeah. Um, and um, you, got, you guys met on um, American Ninja Warrior? Uh, Chris, actually, we didn't. Uh, one of our mutual friends, Cody, he, um, he had a map. He had a. Um, uh, a, you know, some sort of mastermind workshop and I attended there and Chris was the one man that I thought, you know what? I would love to connect with him. I didn't do one thing to approach him at all. I just ended up doing a backflip on stage because Cody asked me to do that. And then he came up to me and said, I knew I needed to connect with you when I saw you do that backflip. And that was like, that was how we connected. It was beyond oh, that's what I, what I did. Yeah. And that, that's Cody Cottle. Cody Cottle. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah You'll I, get I, to meet him too, Tom. I, I love that because, um, Mike, would you do a backflip for us? No, I can't do that. <laughs> Imagine who you could meet if you do a backflip. Maybe the hospital. I don't know. <laughs> I love that. I love that, Justin. You do, I mean, I do it metaphorically all the time, right? But uh, I guess that counts too, Mike. <laughs> Not. <laughs> no, I love that. My, my team would probably say, no, we're the ones that do the backflips for you. But <laughs> Spin on a dime. I think that'd be the right yeah, connection. Right. I What's funny it. about the backflip, just a, a quick little intro into that. That was one of my, one of my deep fears. I always wanted to do a backflip my whole life and thought I'm probably going to fall on my head. It actually took me two years to learn how to do a backflip in my later teens. Once I got to do it, it was a catalyst to overcoming all sorts of fears in my life, eventually overcoming the fear of sharks. But once I started doing backflips, every time I do them, it seems to be a way that God opens up doors into new relationships, new opportunities. And, and I, I think it's symbolic of if you over, if you are willing to trust God, even to the point of falling on your neck, if you really are passionate about doing something and trust God in the midst of that, he will use that very thing to open up new doors. So I, that, I really believe that's how we connected because I was obedient to wanting to do something that was in the desire of my heart. But plus it also sounds like uh, doing backflips is your spiritual gift. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. I want to be in my 50s, 60s, God willing, and be able to do back. Even if it's in the pool, well, I want well, to still be able to well, do it. Well, I'm going to give you a little um, hint then. Then don't stop doing backflips. because. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Can you do a backflip, Tom? <laughs> no, I can't. But I did a push-up challenge in July. You know, they said do 2,200 push-ups. And I'm like, oh, heck, I can slam this one because I'm working out still. I may be 64. And the first day I did them, I did five. And I was like, what, <laughs> what? And, and so I, I did it. I, I, you know, I met the challenge and I uh, got up to where I could do 30. And uh, so then they grabbed me again a couple of weeks ago and said, Hey, we're going to do another push up challenge. So I got smart and I'm starting again already. So I, one thing I've learned is just don't stop. So then somebody okay. challenged me to do pull-ups and I go, you know, I don't need that many, I don't need that, I don't need that stress in my life. <laughs> right. So keep doing the backflips, Justin. So I will. So you, I, I know you're, do, you're doing a lot of stuff right now, Justin. Uh, Love Fearless was one, is, am I, am I saying that right? Is, yes. Love Fearless. Okay. So we're going to talk about that, but before we do, like, let's go back to where all that began. So how, how did, how did, like, where was the beginning of this whole journey that you, you went on? Um, well, the behind the scenes journey, because I mean, I think we, we, we all love to know the behind the scenes story and that's yeah. what you're doing, yep. which I love. Um, it all started with my, my own walk with the Lord. And that was inspired by somebody who saw potential in my life. And, and it helped me have an understanding of what my relationship with God was like, somebody who believed in me and could see potential in me that I didn't see. So once I started growing in my walk with the Lord Eventually, I had an opportunity to uh, compete on American Ninja Warrior. Um, several people said, hey, you should audition for this show. I, I, and, you know, they have over 100,000 people competing to try to be on that show, and they take less than a half percent you know, to compete. I ended up getting on the show, 
first time auditioning, and then they asked me for what my ninja name would be. Everyone's got Mr. NB. Everyone's got a different ninja name. It's all funky, and and I didn't know what my ninja name was. I'm known as Justin Mayna. I don't have this funky name, but I'm like, <laughs> it's like, I, I God, what what name do I have? And I just came up with this this phrase that I felt like identified me. Uh, all the things that I did in life were a result of me wanting to become fearless, which I can get into later, which I, I had a, God gave me a revelation of what it was to be fearless. But the only way I can be fearless was to have a close understanding of what it means to love God and be loved by him. So I had this phrase, love God, live fearless. And that was what I wore because you had to have a shirt. So I had love God, live fearless, had a mountain representing obstacles and That's wore awesome. that shirt on the show with my family. And then everyone was like, man, I love that shirt. Can I have one? And then and then we just kind of rebranded it into Love Fearless is you can live a fearless life life if you have an understanding of how much God loves you. Mm, that's awesome. And so it's, it's random acts of kindness um, where we reach out into the wherever we're at, whether it's us, whether it's by yourself or inspiring other people to join you to do something that's creative that can let somebody know that they're loved. But the secret mission behind it is the love of Jesus, but it's not like, hey, this is a Jesus movement. It's who we are. Jesus has impacted our lives, and we want to give you a taste of that, but I want you to see it through action. You, you know, um, Justin, um, as, as I'm hearing your story, and, and I'm interested in how a backflip helped you get over your fear of sharks, um, <laughs> you know, because uh, you know, I, I, honestly, uh, um, when I, uh, as I lived in L.A. on uh, um, uh, Venice Beach, I remember um, somebody telling me, and it changed my whole perspective of it, and it's still to this day, that when I enter the water, I enter the food chain, and I'm not at the top. You know, I'm somewhere in the middle, and it really impacted me. So I'm interested in how doing backflips, because I, still to this day, I mean, my kids will tell you I, I won't go deep into the water. Well, I used to love to swim and stuff, but when I realized that, it did grab a hold of me, and I, don't, and, and I, and I love the fact that you used one step like you said, to break another barrier, because I do believe that faith, we begin with faith and faith in something we don't see. But then I love the fact that you are saying, you know, um, you're, you're fearless, because I think one of the things that faith is supposed to do for us is we don't have a spirit of fear or timidity, but one of power and sound mind. And I think that's uh, 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 something that you uh, kind of came out with and did. So I'd love to hear more about that. I mean, to me, that's the overcoming power in all believers' life. You know, it, over, it actually will one day take us over the power of death. Absolutely. I, I, I believe that faith builds you and fear tears you down. It's, it's like a cancer. If you don't deal with it, if you can't identify it, it's just like a goal. If you have a dream in life and you're not clear on, um, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but when you're on a on your phone, if you click a destination, um, that your GPS may t you know say, hey, here's your destination. But if it can't find your location, you know you, you can't actually start yet because you don't know where you're going. You have to be clear not only on where you want to go, but you have to be clear of where you're currently at. And once you are clear, then you can actually take those next steps. And um, the next step. Um, the, the first step, I believe, um, for overcoming any fear, which by, was, you know, which can relate to backflips, which can relate to overcoming the fear of sharks, was having a vision of where you want to go. And for mm -hmm. me, I had the vision of seeing somebody else. I don't know if you guys can relate to this, but have you ever been on the, walking the ocean or walking on a pier and seeing some crazy person swimming in the water? maybe with somebody, maybe by themselves, and they're swimming in the water in the shark territory, <laughs> and, and they're, they, they're swimming and like, like nothing. And you know they're fine, but you can't even for, a, for even a moment imagine that you would be out there, but yet they are. They have something that you don't have, and I had to open up my mind enough to think, what do they have? What is their perspective? Because they're living in a, in a in a realm of freedom that I can't even understand. So once I got around those people and said, why are you not afraid of sharks? How do you, what's that first step? And then open yourself up to thinking differently. And that, that was the first step I had to choose. Do I want my life to involve an area of freedom in there? Or it would be very simple to say, yeah, well, it's their territory. I'm going to continue to watch shark movies. I'm going to continue to justify <laughs> my own reasoning. And it's your life. 
And I believe God's given you dominion to take authority. And he has given you authority and dominion to do the things you want. And the simple thing is God wants to give you the desires of your heart. If you don't ask for it, you'll never receive it. And if you don't, if you don't seek the Lord, he won't, he's not going to give you the desires of your heart. And here's the thing. God loves you so much that he's not even asking for your obedience. He loves obedience, even over sacrifice. But sometimes God's like, just seek me, just have pleasure, delight in my delight in me. And I will give you the desires of your heart. So I really believe that God cares to show you that he, he loves the things that you even the, the, the dreams that have fallen short, that have been buried, he wants to revive them because a dream revived is even better than a dream that has never died. You know, like it's, it's like mm. Jesus is love. It revived is even more powerful. Amen. Um, you know, um, I, I always tell people, uh, Justin, that faith is like a muscle. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. you, you, you know, we all uh, uh, realize that you have to stimulate a muscle beyond the 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 um, stimulation that it's been through before to get it to grow. But I believe faith is like that because the Bible tells us in James that we're going to go through trials to build up our endurance. And it says if you need wisdom, ask for it, but don't have a double mind. So that's where I always believe that that double mind is keeping you from expanding your faith muscle. Because you're not, you know, because you may hear something from God and have to break through it. What, what, what is your thoughts about that? Um, I, I, I want to be a man of integrity and I want to help people overcome fear just the way I've seen God help me overcome fear. And in order for me to have that sense of authority, I have to be living it out every single day. There, it's every single week, there are things where I get challenged. Can I do this? Should I do it? Does it scare me? Well, if it scares me, if I say yes to it and draw closer to the Lord, it's kind of a slap in the devil's face. And I, I, and I, it empowers me to know that I have power, the power of Jesus to confront any fear. Uh, because here's the thing that it, it's so powerful. And this is like a theme in my life right now. It's not what you're fighting. It's if you're fighting mm-hmm. and God will, will see mm-hmm. you through the victory if you're willing to fight and it doesn't matter what the obstacle is. So I, 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 I firmly believe that overcoming fear is like a muscle that needs to be stimulated on the daily. If not, you're going to become complacent. You, you know, I love that when you talked about vision, because the Bible says that people will perish without vision, you know, and that vision gives you that chance to be able to go after something. And I always tell people that if the vision God gives you for your life doesn't scare you it may not be from him because he always gives us something we can accomplish through him and, and i love that i got a question i've got to do just so i get paid today um <laughs> yeah this is the uh, one thing we justin have to do. is there something about you that some of the your fans or maybe the people listening to you don't know and when i say that don't reveal where the bodies are or anything like that <laughs> you know yeah. but 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 we're talking about we've had people come on that said oh i was colorblind somebody i i played the violin so, you know, you know, I'm not sure what, Mike, we heard about you. I, I, I said I live with Vince. Oh, that's right. You said you lived with Vince. That was an accomplishment, I guess. And I love Vince. I love Vince. Maybe him living with you was an accomplishment. <laughs> but, but is there anything that maybe that people don't know? I mean, you know, one of the things that I overcame is I had a speech impediment. One of the things that drove me to, you know, to making myself look better on the outside because I was always terrified that my communication method wasn't acceptable. I've gotten over that, but I still have my speech impediment. So is there anything about you that maybe somebody doesn't know? How about this? I'm going to just rapid fire say three things. So maybe somebody listening can relate to them. One is I had a very strong speech impediment growing up. Really? Uh, people made fun of me because uh, they said, hey, what's your name? And I'm like, you already know it. It's Justin. And I, and I had a very strong list very strong list. And it made me feel like I I was afraid. I I had two fears. One is I was afraid to communicate because I was fear that somebody would make fun of me. Uh, So I, I, so I had so much that I wanted to express, but I was so closed off to expressing them. And I also had the fear of getting too close to somebody because eventually they would realize how stupid I was. There was a lot of fear, but it, it stemmed from my speech impediment. And I had to work. I remember liking this girl in, in middle school and I, her name was Ashley, and I and I would practice for hours. Ashley, would you? Hey, Ashley, would you go out? And I was eventually I quit. I'm like, I, I she, no one's gonna want to go out with me. I can't even pronounce her name right, mm-hmm. and I can't repeat the name. <laughs> so anyway, um, I had that. Um, a couple other ones. I played the clarinet. 
And I even started teaching private lessons in sixth grade because I grew up in a family of musicians and I would be in my in my bedroom and my dad would scream from the kitchen, <laughs> E flat, you know, so I, I grew up with music. I, I grew up with teachers on the daily, so I got naturally good at it. Played the clarinet throughout middle school and high school. And the other thing that would be interesting is my first kiss was at the age of 24 in an acting class. What's interesting, see, I had a speech impediment. Now, I grew up in school way before you did, and they would, <laughs> they would wheel in the carts, and they would give you a hearing test and a speech test. And I have a lisp, and six and sevens would always smoke me out, you know. And so then I would go to a special class. Back in those days, you know, my friends would say, hey, see you later, Tom. We'll see you in a month which in a, it took a month for them to realize I didn't really belong in their class. I just had a speech impediment. Now, my speech impediment goes a little farther to my thinking because when I get to a word that I think I'm going to have problems with, my mind... Makes a different word? Yeah, because well, Mike always gives me a hard time with it. <laughs> so, um, you know, he's, he's, I think that's senior abuse or other words, but, <laughs> but he thinks it's funny. But, 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 if I, but if I go to say something... You know, there was, there was a, uh, a, the president of the university in Bakersfield. Her name was Lynette Lenesley. Now, right now, I had to stop. I had to enunciate it. And it, and so so I could be talking, talking, and I'll stop, and somebody thinks it's a problem. I go, no. For me to get through this, I've, got to, I, I've, I've learned tricks with myself. So to hear that you had a lisp, you're probably a tongue thruster, which is not anything of your fault. It's a mechanics and people don't realize that. So I, it's really interesting to hear that other people have suffered through that. And it's funny when you said that you would practice enunciating. That's something that lispers usually do. Yeah. And and I would I would go through it. Um, I would learn techniques. Yes. I would know the word is coming up. Even to this day, when I think of Ashley, I think like psychologically, I'm kind of building myself up to say it. And my trick was to, I found out that I actually it sounded like I said it better if I would go over the word faster. Like almost like when you're writing and you don't know if it's a, a U or an I or something, you just kind of blur the letters together <laughs> so somebody can look at it. So it's like if I say, Ashley, you know, like I can say it fast enough, it actually makes it sound fine. I found that that most people didn't even hear it. So that's how I kind of adjusted to it. But I, I hear it and I also, whenever I see myself on camera, I see that I talk with the side of my mouth, like almost like a Sylvester Stallone. It's not uniform and it would drive me crazy. And then I realized, you know what? God loves me. I need to love myself enough yes. to know that I've done everything I can. I don't want to have filters with myself and what God wants me to say. But you know, I think I've seen, cause a lot of people, I, I have my own challenges, which for me, the biggest one is ADHD, which a lot of entrepreneurs have anyway. But yeah. <clears throat> um, those challenges, I think a lot of times are what makes us push harder and what actually ends up making mm -hmm. us successful. God, God gives us different things. And some, I think a lot of times he'll put those things in there on purpose because he wants to use them to refine us. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, well, I, and I think when you go through the J book of um, uh, James, it tells you that the, we're supposed to consider it joy when trials come upon us. And I used to look at that scripture and go, well, I don't think that's joy, but the idea is getting through the trial to learn from it and to change through it. And I think that's probably the biggest thing. Justin, so so did you grow up with faith or did faith come into your life later in life? I grew up in a Christian home, okay. but I didn't see it on the day to day outside of mm -hmm. going to church on Sundays, going to a church event, going to a fall festival for uh, October 31st. Uh, and outside of that and praying at the dinner table, I, you know, they meant, they meant well, they would pray with us before bed, but I never saw it day to day. So I, I, I learned more and, and I'm not shooting my parents yeah, down. They did the best they could, but yeah. it was later on in life that I, I saw other believers talking about issues that I was like, wow, you're, you're able to talk about those things. Why, how, you know, isn't that like a bad thing to talk about or, you know, how, why are people getting together at their homes I thought church was just on Sundays and wow, they actually like this. I, d I was never modeled to enjoy a relationship with the Lord with people that were like-minded. I just thought we were all kind of the same, and but yet we prayed and we know who God was. But at my core, even up to the age of 16, I didn't even know, and I don't know if my parents know this, but I didn't really know if I died, I would go to heaven. I, literally, I thought I would, 
And I, because I would, you know, accepted Jesus in my heart, but I didn't fully know. And it took somebody outside of my family to say, Hey, do you know? I'm like, well, I don't really know. It's like, are you kidding? Like you absolutely can know. And, 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 you know, that's why we need help from people outside the family. Cause my family probably said that, but I, I, it, my, my ear was maybe just, you know, it, it, I, I didn't receive it. So, so your relationship with the Lord at that stage was more like religious or ritualistic. And then later on, yeah. you, you had that personal relationship, like a real true relationship with, with God. The walk with the Lord. Right. It was like, like, I remember, I'll never forget a friend saying, Hey, you want to do drugs? You know, are you, do you have any intention? I was 16. Do you want to do drugs sometime? I'm like, well, yeah, I know my brother at one point. I asked him about it. Have you ever done it? He was an older brother, you know, nine years older. And he said, yeah, hey, Justin, I'm not going to lie. I've done them. Um, you know, and it was it fun. I'm not going to lie. It was, but I wouldn't recommend doing it. But I just remember thinking, man, if my brother did it, I'm going to do it. I want to try things. And until somebody questioned that and said, hey, you being a Christian, what do you think God would have? What, what do you think God would say to you doing drugs? And I just was, I never questioned that. And I was like, shoot, I don't think that's probably okay. <laughs> and, and I, and I, and I realized it was that, that was the turning point of being a believer is walking out your faith in all of your actions. It's not just the mindset. It's you have to be, there has to be fruit. You have to be walking it out daily. And that, that was a whole start of battle. I love that. I, I, I you know, as, as um, I was raised a heathen, <laughs> I really was. My dad mm -hmm. did a great, <laughs> my dad did a great job raising my brother and I, he did a really good job, but I always love it because God doesn't leave a story unfinished because I came to the Lord at 34. And one of the things that I find amazing is that God of the universe wants to have a personal relationship with me every day. And I think that's the remarkable thing about it. Like hearing you say, I grew up in a home. I saw the basics. I didn't th see anything beyond the basics being practiced. Go to church, pray before meals, you know, those kind of things. But then you took it to a whole nother level where that became very important to you. I mean, it's, it's one of those things that when I think that clicks in a, a human being's life, they're on the road to, I think, becoming what God intends them to be. Waking up in the morning, having a conversation <laughs> with a God of the universe that could actually change things. Yeah, and honestly, it, I, even when you say I made that choice, I, I'm so thankful for the grace of God because there are times that I reflect back and I'm like, did I really choose that? Because what really helped me, and everyone's different, but was to see it modeled in somebody else's life. I, I had a, somebody that I saw that they... They're, 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 there was good fruit in their life. I was like, how can they be fun? How could there be favor on their life? How could they, why is there freedom in this area of life? And I realized that, wow, there's, there's a joy that comes from them that stands out. And I thought, well, I, I can learn from this person, but there's also an element that goes on behind the scenes that, you know, it's just like, you can tell a lot about somebody in their, like, if they pray, you're like, wow, they must have a deep relationship with God like on in the private. So I, I, I saw something that was modeled in somebody else that inspired me to realize if I want to grow in that area, I need to know that when the enemy wants to attack, when I'm all alone at, at night, what type of man am I going to be in that moment? Am I going to cater to the numbness of my mind of before bed watching videos? Am I going to go into temptation and feel lonely and try to get needs met in unhealthy ways? Or am I going to have the time that God literally desperately wants with us in that alone place? What type of man am I going to be? And it's a daily battle. And it's, and it's, you know, there, there are tools that God gives us. And the greatest tool is looking at our peers. We are our brother's keeper. We look around and realize if we don't have help, we need to ask for it and and be that person. I, I never, I'll just share this one quick thing. I'll never forget a time that I was leading a, um, a men's Bible group. And one day I was like, if I'm going to be a leader, I need to model it. I need to be vulnerable. One day I was, it was like 1130 at night, so inconvenient. I'm like, man, I was kind of struggling, almost like going to go in a downward spiral, feeling like, a, like in a bit of a funk. I was like, ah, I need to battle this and I need to represent what it's like to ask for help when it's inconvenient. So I called one of my friends and said, hey man, just be honest, I'm just in a little bit of a funk and wanted to give you a call. I don't like normally doing this, but and we were talking and, and we were just chatting about a few things and at the very end of the call, I said, I'm not gonna lie, you called at the most perfect time because I was literally about to go out and sleep with this woman that I've met, like, like I was about to go downhill back. <laughs> like he was going to do that. And if it wasn't for me making that call, he would have, 
you would have done that. And it reminded me that because of my vulnerability, it was, it was God, just the way God works as a grand weaver. He helped me out, broke that cycle. And it encouraged me to know that, Hey, this man, my brother, that I was like being responsible for. And he, I helped him because I reached out to him, even though it was for a selfish reason. Well, the, so. you know, the thing is, um, sin is pleasurable for a season. And Tom and I've had this conversation many times that <clears throat> God didn't put rules in the Bible just to make you follow a bunch of rules because he likes to see you march in a line, right? He knows what's going to cause destruction for you. And he's he says, I want you to do these things because I know it's going to lead to bad things for you, right? It's kind of like I was talking with a couple members of our team the other day and ta talking about my wife. And we're, we're on uh, going in a few days here, 15 years that we've been married. And I, I shared this many times, like I'm more in love. And I was thinking about this last night, like while I was like laying in bed, couldn't sleep because of my shoulder hurt. Um, and, and I was like, man, I am just so blessed and so thankful that I'm so in love with my wife. And, <clears throat> but the, the thing is like, have I had, a, have I had temptation? Have I had opportunities? Um, yeah, I have, but, um, that's going to be pleasurable for a second. And then like, and this is what I was telling my team that there is like Ludavia, my wife hits it like a 10 out of 10 on almost everything. And like the one thing, maybe she hits a nine on I find someone that hits a 10 on that one thing. And then it's like, it's so stupid. So short sighted just to, Hey, let me go live for a moment of pleasure. And then you're going to have the rest of your life to live in destruction. God knows what's yeah. good for us. And that's why he called us not to do it <laughs> you know yeah exactly and, and it even goes as much as gluttony i mean i tell people you know just because i'm fit doesn't mean i struggle with um uh eating i've got two eating disorders from the fitness industry mm -hmm. that i struggle with all the time but god i think wants us to um live a longer life and through fitness that is part of it but nutrition is even a bigger part and i just say i just say hey you know, you, you, we, you know, and I, and I think sometimes the word sin has a misnomer because it's a big word and people want to ca characterize or categorize the sins. And I'm like, those little ones can get me as much as those big ones. I don't know. They'll trip me up as much as um, what do yeah. you think is the number one. You know, right, I, right. I always ask people that help me write me down a list so I can <laughs> avoid those. So, uh, Justin, I, I know there's so many more aspects and areas of your life. We're going to talk about some of those in, in another Muscle show. Matters Muscle and Matters ministry and Ministry. Yeah. So if you're watching, you got to tune <laughs> nice in to a plug. couple other shows <laughs> because uh, it, Justin's got a full life that involves ministry and fitness. Yeah. So, so um, but before we go, is there anything you'd like to leave our audience with for this show? Or is there anywhere you'd like to tell them to go to learn more about you or what you do or follow you or whatever? Honestly, I would, I would just encourage the audience with this. If you're struggling with finding purpose in your life, you don't give up on that battle. It is a fight um, because the enemy would love for you to just stay in this, 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 this moment of just limbo of not knowing what to do. And you need to fight to get out of that place of feeling stuck. I, I, one of my main purposes in life is helping people overcome fear because I've seen what the enemy has done in paralyzing people. And, and we are supposed to be on the offense. We need to take territory. We're supposed to uh, demonstrate excellence in all areas. And, you know, it's funny is it, you could be doing the right thing fitness wise, but yet your nutrition behind the scenes is not that good. And you know, what's funny, nobody's going to probably, you know, talk about that, but you know, for yourself, it's not healthy you are the one that should take responsibility for that. Don't wait for somebody else mm -hmm. to come and say, hey, that's not that good. Because they could, you know, socially, it may not seem that bad because you look great on the outside. But you know, when you're at night and you're just sleeping and you're not at peace, if you don't have that, you know, fear, you know, God is not giving you a spirit of fear, but of love, it's the counter of fear is love, uh, power, love, and a sound mind. If you don't have a sound mind in all areas, you need to deal with that is your responsibility. I would encourage you to reach out, pray about it. And literally right after this podcast, think of, ask the Lord, ask the Holy Spirit, who is your helper? You may not know how to do something. The Holy Spirit is capable of doing everything. Ask the Holy Spirit to highlight three people. And maybe it's just one person to reach out to and say, Hey, I am struggling in this one area. And, 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 or, or just, or it could be what last thing is, what if there's an area of like passion that you have towards something you've always wanted to do, a dream or a desire, 
and you've never fulfilled that, you've never even taken that one step toward that, I would encourage you to reach out to somebody who cares about you, share that with them and say, hey, I would love to be doing at least something in this area. What are your thoughts on that? Can you please pray with me that God can show me a direction in this? Because I know God cares about it and you should as well. And I just, I want this podcast, if anything else, if anything else stood out, let this stand out that allow God to resurrect the dreams and desires in your heart because he cares about them so much and it may have nothing to do with money. Amen. Yep. Amen. I love it. Yeah. So Tom, you have anything you want to add before we, no, I just love talking to Justin. I can't wait to get into the ministry and and, and the (laughs) fitness part. And, uh, just want to thank Alex and Joanna and Abby and, um, um, uh, um, Nathaniel, even Nathaniel, though he's not feeling yeah, well. he's not feeling well today. And, and our Gabe. creative consultants, yeah, creative consultant Tessa Jimenez and Taylor Touchstone, and then of course Danny Jimenez and you, Mike, yeah. MLH Productions, and just doing the <laughs> housekeeping because we have to. Hey, how glad you tuned in today! Don't forget the other shows that Justin is going to be talking about other components of his life. God, God bless. bless. It's an honor being here. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs>